we're going to look at 10 CapCut video editing tips and tricks that you need to know. For example, I partnered with CapCut to show you how you can place text behind a person, how you can make your very own AI avatar news reporter, build your dream YouTube studio using the magic of AI. You can pull off most of these using the free version of CapCut, although some of them require that you go pro. Let's check these out. First off, if you don't yet have CapCut, you can download it for free at this website. You can click on the card in the top right hand corner and I've also included a link in the description. Once you land on this website, click on the button that says download for free. This works on both Windows and also on Mac. You can also install CapCut on your iPhone or your Android phone. I've also included a link in the description. In this video, we're going to focus on the CapCut desktop software. This brings us to tip number one. You can place text behind a person speaking. First off, we need to turn something on called the free layer. Over on the right hand side under the project details, all the way down at the bottom, we can see that it's currently turned off. Let's click on the modify button and this opens up all of the project settings. Down at the very bottom, let's toggle the free layer on. This allows us to place text under a video clip on the timeline. When it's turned off, you can't do that. Over here, I'll click on the save button. Next, in the media bin, take the video clip that you would like to place the text behind. I also like this one and then drag it down to my timeline. This will serve as our base layer or the background. Next, we need to place the text above this video clip. Right up on top, click on text and then pick out your favorite looking text. I like this yellow text. I think that looks fun. I'll click on that and then drag it down to the timeline. Next, I'll adjust the length so it's the same length as the talking head video underneath. Next, I'll select the text on my timeline and right up here, I'll type in my text. I could click on these handles to adjust the size and let's make that a little bit bigger so you'll be able to read the text behind me. Now, of course, the text is currently sitting on top of me. So next, let's go to the top back to the media bin. And here I have that talking head video again. Let's now drag and drop that onto track number three above the text. So now you should have one video file, the text, and another video file. Now this will serve as our foreground. So I want to cut out the subject from the background and then we'll see the text underneath. So how do we do that? Well, first off, select this video clip. Then in the top right hand corner, click into the video tab and then click on cutout. Here we have all sorts of different options that will remove the subject from the background. Down at the very bottom, we have something called auto cutout that uses AI to remove me from the background. And it's actually pretty impressive and works very well. I'll click on this box. And look at that, it's now removed me from the background. And you can now see the subscribed text that's underneath this layer. And down at the very bottom, we have the background layer. Now, of course, I could select this text and in the top right hand corner, you could apply different types of animations. For example, maybe I want the text to slide in. So there, you can have some fun with it. This brings us to tip number two. You can make your very own AI avatar news reporter. And this one's a lot of fun. Now, first off, we need some type of news studio background. So in the left hand corner, let's click into media and then go down to the library. And right up top, we have this search field. Let's type in news and then hit enter to see what comes back. And look at that, we have all sorts of different news studio options. I like this one, I think it looks really modern and also upgraded. I'll click on that and then drag it down onto my timeline. And here I could press play with my spacebar to preview what it looks like. And I think that looks really good. Next, we need to enter in the text that the AI avatar will say. So up on top, let's click on text and it doesn't matter what text you choose here. We're going to delete it later on. So I'll just select the default. I'll press on it and then drag it down onto my timeline. And in here, you can now enter in some text. So I'll type in the Kevin Cookie Company is now the most valuable company in the world by market cap. If you need assistance writing your text, you can hover over this icon and you get the AI writer. So you can use AI to write some text. It works fairly well. Now that I've entered in my text, I want an AI character or avatar to read this text. In the top right hand corner, let's click on AI characters. And here you'll see a wide variety of different characters that you can use. Now, I think this one in the top right hand corner, she looks like she would make a good news reporter. So I'll click on her and then I'll click on add. It's now generating the speech. And look at that, it's now inserted my AI avatar. 
Down on the timeline, I no longer have a need for this text, so I'll click on the text and then press the delete key on my keyboard and that removes it. Next, I'll select the AI avatar and here I can adjust the size. I'll take these handles and let's make it a little larger just so she fills up more of the frame and here I can also reposition her. Let's now hear what it sounds like. Over here, I'll click on the play icon. The Kevin Cookie Company is now the most valuable company in the world by market cap. That is pretty cool. I like it. This brings us to tip number three. You can generate your very own YouTube or TikTok or Instagram studio using AI. Over on the left hand side within media, let's click on AI generated. And right here, you can type in some text that describes the image that you would like to see. Now, I want to make a, let's say a modern or futuristic looking YouTube studio. I'll type in that text and let's now generate it. And look at that, that's a really cool looking YouTube studio. I wish mine really looked like that, but luckily through the magic of video editing, we could actually make it look like that. Over here, find the image that you like. You could also try another prompt to see if you get other images back. And I'll go with this one, and you have a button where you can click on HD, and this will upscale the image quality. I'll click on that, and I also kind of liked this one right here, so I'll also turn that into HD. Now that both images have been upscaled, right up above, I'll click on this plus icon and this will now add it down below to my timeline. I'll scroll down and I also like this one, so let me also add this to my timeline by clicking on the plus icon. I now have both images on my timeline. Now, I still want my video to be in 16 by nine aspect ratio. So up above, I'll click on this ratio button and here I'll select 16 by nine. You'll notice that the image doesn't quite fill the frame, so I'll use these handles to expand the size just to make sure that it fills up this entire space. I'll click on this one, and over here, I can do the same. I'll expand it just so it fills the frame. Over on the left-hand side, I now want to insert a talking head video of myself. Under media, I'll click on local or all the files that are on my computer. And right here, I see a video of me talking. I'll drag this down onto the timeline and I'll place it above these AI generated images. Now, of course, you see my actual background behind me. So here, I'll make sure to select my video clip on the timeline and up above, let's click into video cut out and down at the very bottom, just like we did earlier in tip number one, let's click on auto cut out. And just like that, you now see me in front of my new YouTube studio. Look at that, what an upgrade. Now, if I go to the middle of the timeline and I play it, is this a You'll notice that it just cuts between these two different studios. Maybe I want it to transition. So up on top, I'll click on transitions and over here, I have all sorts of different options. But let's go with this one called Shake 3. I'll select that, drag it down onto my timeline and here I'll place it between these two clips. Let's click on OK and now I can play it and let's see what that looks like. Is this a virtual? That's pretty cool. This brings us to tip number four. You can blur out a face. Here in my media bin, I have a video of my son and I would like to blur out his face but still be able to see the background. To do that, let's take the video clip and drag it down onto the timeline. So there I have track number one. Let's now bring that same exact video clip down onto the timeline again. So right now I have two tracks, both with the identical video clip. Right up above, let's now apply a blur effect to the second track. Up on top, let's click on effects. And here, let's search for an effect. I'll type in blur. And I think this one will work well. I'll select this video effect and then drag it down onto track number two. And there we see that everything's been blurred out. But I only want the blur to affect my son's face. So let's click on this video clip and in the top right hand corner, we're going to do that by using a mask. Let's click into video and then over here, let's click on mask. With a mask, we can define what portion of track number two we want to see and what portion of track number one we want to see. So over here with track number two selected, I just want a circle of the blur visible. So I'll select circle and here we could see the blur on track number two and everything else from track number one. Over here, I can adjust the size of the mask circle. So here I'll make it a little smaller and let me place it directly over my son's face. That's pretty cool. My son's face is now blurred out, but when I click on the play button, 
You'll notice that my sun is moving, but the blur mask is not moving. We need to use something called keyframes to make sure that the mask moves with my sun's movement. Let's go back to the very beginning of the timeline. And right here, that position of the blur looks good. So over here, I'll click on this icon and that applies a keyframe. Basically, what that says is I want this position at this frame on my timeline. If I move forward a little bit, here we'll see that my sun has moved a little bit. So let's now go up to the mask and here I'll adjust it so now it sits over his face. And over here, you'll see that it automatically applied another keyframe. So we want the mask to be in this position at this point in time. Here, if I move forward, my sun moves back a little bit. Let's adjust the position again. And there it applies another keyframe, or basically where that circle needs to be at this specific point. And if we go to the very end, here he hasn't moved too much, but let me adjust it just slightly. And there again, it applies another keyframe. Now, if we go back to the very beginning, you'll see that the mask moves with my sun's movement. I think that worked pretty well. At the very bottom of the details, you can also apply a feather to the mask. So if you just want kind of a more gradual shift to that blurring, you can apply that. So I think that works really well. This brings us to tip number five, and you can have some karaoke fun with this. Here in my media bin, I have a song called Light It Up, and it's a combination of both vocals and also music. Let's have a quick listen. Now, I would like to remove the vocals from that so I just have the music, and CapCut makes that surprisingly easy. I'll take this audio file and then drag it down onto my timeline. There we see it. I'll select this file, and in the top right-hand corner, let's click into the basic view. If we scroll down just a little bit, there's now a new option called vocal isolation. Let's check this box, and I have the option to either keep the vocals or remove the vocals. Let's start by just keeping the vocals. I'll select this, and then let's play it back. And look at that, it just completely removes the music and we just have the vocals left behind. That works so well. Now let's go over and let's just try keeping the music. Here, I'll remove the vocals. That works so well. And you can now have a karaoke party. Just load in your favorite song, remove the vocals, and you're good to go. This brings us to tip number six. You can use shortcut keys to edit so much faster. Here's some of my favorites. Right here, I have a clip in my media bin, but I would only like to insert a portion of it onto my timeline. I'll press the I key and that'll set the in point. And over here, right at about there, I'll press the O key to set the out point. Now I can drag this down onto my timeline and that'll insert only a portion of the clip. Right over here, I want to split this clip. I'll leave some of it at the beginning and move some of it to the end. Here, when I hover over, I see this yellow line. I'll press Control B right there, and that splits the clip at that point. I can now take this and move it to the end of my timeline. Right over here, I want to trim this video clip. I could press the Q key, and that'll remove everything to the left. And over here, I want to trim the end. I'll press the W key, and that'll trim everything over to the right. Now, here you see my timeline, but I would like it to take up the full space here. Now, of course, I could zoom in, or I could press Shift-Z, and there I could see all of my different clips on the timeline, and it takes up the full space. Of course, there are also many other shortcut keys that you can use. Right up on top, click on Shortcut, and here you can see all the shortcut keys. You can even click into any one of them, and you can set it to whatever key you prefer. This brings us to tip number seven. You can very quickly get feedback from others on your video project. In the top right-hand corner, let's click on the Share icon. Over here, you can give your video a name. You can also specify a space where you'd like to save it, and you could also adjust all this other information. For now, I'll leave it set to the defaults, and let's click on Export and Share. Now that it's finished processing the video, I can now click on this button to copy the link and I can now share it with others. Let me send it to someone. This now drops us on a page where we can preview the video and also leave feedback. Down below, I'll click on play. And 
Actually, I'm wondering why they're eating sugar cookies. I think chocolate chip cookies would work better. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, I can add a comment. Now type in my comment and then send it. And here you see that it attaches a timestamp to the comment. And if we look down below on the progress bar, you'll see that my comment is attached with this point in the video. Now, if I move forward a little bit right here, maybe I think we should zoom in on this boy as he's wiping the flour off of his hands. Over here, I can click on the annotation tool and let's draw an arrow and maybe a rectangle over him. And maybe I add a comment that says, let's zoom in here. Once I leave my comment here too, I could send that. Now, as we watch the video clip here, I'll click on play. You'll notice right at this point, if I click on this, you'll see the annotation overlaying the video. This is such an effective way to leave comments and feedback on videos. This brings us to tip number eight. You can set up what's called a brand kit. And this is especially helpful if you find yourself using the same media assets again and again across all of your different projects. Over on the left-hand side, you can click into an existing space or you could also create a new one. I'll click into this existing space. You can add all sorts of different media to your brand kit. You could add videos, images, stickers, fonts, and if you go all the way down, you could even add colors that you end up using again and again in all of your videos. Right up on top, I want to add an image file. Now click on this. And right here, there's the logo for the Kevin Cookie Company. I'll select that one, and that's now adding it to my brand kit. Right down below, I also have some music I would like to load. I'll click on this, and right here is the song that we use in all of our videos. I'll upload both of those to my brand kit. Let's now jump into a new project. Up on top, I'll click on Home, and then click on New Project. Within the project, over on the left-hand side, within media, I can now go all the way to the bottom and there's a category for brand assets. When I click on that, here I see my logo file for the Kevin Cookie Company. So that way it's easily accessible and I could very quickly drag and drop that into my project. Up on top, I can also click on audio and down at the bottom of this list, I have my brand music and there's that song that we use in all of our videos. This brings us to tip number nine. If you feel like CapCut gets a little bit slower as you're working on your video project, you can improve the performance by using something called proxy media. Within your project, over on the right-hand side in the project details, let's click on modify. And right up on top, let's switch into the performance tab. And right here, you'll see a toggle for something called proxy. This is basically a lower resolution version of all of your different video clips. That way it makes it easier for your computer to work with those clips. However, once you go to render your project, it'll use the original video files so you won't lose out on any quality. It just makes the editing experience faster. Toggle that on and then down below click on save. This brings us to tip number 10. You can very quickly insert beautiful looking captions on your videos. Right here on my timeline, I have a short video that I pulled together for TikTok, but I think it would be a little bit more engaging if it also included captions. Right up on top, let's click on text and over on the left hand side, there's the option for auto captions. Right over here, you can choose the language of the audio track. Mine's in English, so I'll select English. And down below, let's click on create. This is now inserted captions onto my timeline down below. And if I go to the beginning of the video clip here, I can see the captions overlaying the video. But these captions look pretty basic. With the text selected up on top, I'll click into text and then templates. I can apply any one of these templates to my captions. For example, let me try this one right here. This is one of the pro captions, but there are also some free options as well. I'll click on this and currently it looks a little small. So let me actually blow this up a little bit. Let's drag this out. And over here, I could also pull it in just to make sure that it fits within the width of this video. So let's say right at about here. I think this looks good. Let's now go to the beginning and play it back to see how this looks. That looks pretty nice. I like that. All right. Well, let me know which one was your favorite tip. To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.